Hey, Steve Basic Architect. I'm out here at our Build Show Build Boston site, but I'm doing one of my Build Show videos today. We're going to do a deep dive and we're going to talk about concrete footings and we're going to get back to basics and uh, not basic as in me, but basics as in fundamentals. And uh, we're going to talk about concrete footings and what I mean in a house. So let's get going. All right, so we're down in the hole here. You can see the concrete footing is in place. This is, you know, generic footing, but like I said, we're going back to the fundamentals here. This is a 24 inch wide footing. It's 12 inches tall. There's two pieces of rebar down in the bottom of that footing. We'll talk about that when we're back to the studio. You can see we have a bunch of number four bars. I call them J bars. I just happen to have one here. So these are actually set down into the concrete, and as they're placed, the J is actually altered inside there. So these are actually meant for any lateral displacement, right? So there, as we pour the wall over the top of this, this joint here is actually placed in shear as the ground load is trying to push that wall over. Now, in this case here, this is a garage wall, so we have pressure on both sides, but where we have a basement and it's open, you'll have that. The other thing we do is we run a number five bar down along the bottom of the wall, one across the middle of the wall, and two up at the top of the wall, but we're talking about footings today, not foundation walls. Behind me, you can see, this is where we go from the house footing to the garage footing, better known as a step footing because as you can see, it basically steps up. So notice in the uh, garage footing, there are no bars and there's no bars. They put a little, what I call a sloppy keyway in over there, but basically you have the same lateral pressure on both sides of this wall. So there's really never any pressure to move this wall one side to the other because it's ground pushing against ground. So we don't need these bars like we do in the basement over there. If we take a walk over here, a couple other things. So here you'll see if that we have a footing outside of the house footing. And basically what we're looking at here is we'll have the foundation wall over there and then we'll have a secondary wall here. I'm actually standing underneath what will be the garage slab. So this is actually eventually going to become the stairwell. So it starts high on that side. It'll come down to a landing here and there will literally be a door here that takes me into the basement. Going into the basement, you'll see we have a number of pad footings here, right? Or point source footings, whatever you want to call them. But basically these are where the lolly columns land that carry interior loads in the house. So these are all three by three, they're heavily reinforced inside. And in some instances, we have the proximity was so close that they'll just gang up a couple of the footings. That's why that one is a little larger. It probably has two or three columns that are gonna go on the top of it. Anyways, let's jump back to the studio. We'll break out some drawings. I'll do some simple math and we'll walk through the basics of concrete footings with Big Red. I'll see you back at the studio. Hey everybody. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, Build Show Build Boston out there. It's going pretty awesome. Uh, there's a whole bunch of videos up if you want to check those out based on the series. So we're going to do 24 episodes in total. But if you want to go see more in-depth stuff, go check those out. They're under uh, originals here on our Build Show Network website. But anyways, Concrete footing basics. You know, I was thinking about it. I get a lot of comments online and it's almost like people don't really know what they're talking about. So I figured, hey, let's filter through some of this and see if we can't help out the situation and give them a starting point um, to think about before they just rant off on something they don't really understand. So anyways, got Big Red. Got uh, a detail here and a framing or a foundation plan. So let's have at it. Let's talk about concrete footing basics. All right, so we have the framing plan. I know we're talking about the foundation, but we have the framing plan here. 
to talk about it. So I figured we would talk about two different locations. So one would be through here because this is a multiple bearing situation. The other we can do through here and take a look at it. Um, so I think it's uh, yeah, a little surprising about what's happening there. So anyways, take a look at this. First thing we need to understand is bring down what is the load. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to talk about here because I put up stuff on Instagram and people say, oh my God, that's gonna fail, it's gonna fall. And they really don't understand what the loading um, looks like on a specific structural case. So let's run through that. So through here, we know that from this point to that point is 24 feet, but we have an intermediate bearing. So what that suggests is that half of this span and half of that span are gonna be taken up by the beam. So this footing here is really only carrying this area here, and this footing is really only carrying this area here. And rather than do, you know, the math for the middle, we're just gonna do the math here because pretty much that beam sees twice the load that we would see on both of these conditions, right? So basically the beam is getting cut into three different uh, loads. There's the center load, there's the load that goes out to this end, and a load that goes out to that end. Now, the one thing we know is the span of that is 24 feet, All right? So that suggests that Half of the span goes this way, half of the span goes that way. So in this span here, I believe this one was um, about 10 feet and this one was 14 feet. So 14 feet, this is the governing span because that's only five and this is seven. So in that seven, we have a floor load live load, we have a floor dead load. So we'll say floor, live load, floor, dead load. And then we have a roof live load and a roof dead load. And you know, there are this ground snow load, but I'm just gonna do some pretty easy math and suggest that for the floor there, we use 40 pounds. For the live load, we'll use 20, and then we'll repeat that. Um, 40 and that would be one of the worst cases with snow. Um, without snow we really wouldn't have a live load on there um, and the dead load will use the 20 pounds again. So this is you know midwinter got some snow on the roof. So what we're looking at basically is 80 pounds of live load that comes down that wall and the 20 pounds of dead load plus we have the wall itself which is good for, I don't know, we can say 10 pounds a foot at 90, or at nine pounds. So that's an additional 90 pounds for the wall. And what we're doing is basically calculating what a one foot section looks like that comes into that wall, right? So the 40, and this is all times seven, right? So we get 280, 140, 280, 140, and then that's just the static, 90. So 280, 280, that's 560, 6, 7, 840 plus 90 is 930 pounds. So basically the reaction here needs to be at least 930 pounds. So that's the load that's coming in going down the wall and being imposed on our foundation every foot along this wall. So every foot along this wall, the foundation wall is seeing 930 pounds. So what does that mean to the foundation wall? Well, the foundation wall, remember, comes down onto a footing. 
the footing is two feet wide. Now the interesting thing about footings is when they bear on the ground, they're actually pushing the load down onto like a pyramid portion of the ground. But we have this load here of 930 pounds. So we need a reaction of at least that for the building to stand up. If the ground couldn't resist the 930 pounds, then the building would get pushed into the ground, but it doesn't. The ground resists because the bearing soil here, and I confirmed this with our structural engineer, um, he said that typically they use a number somewhere around 2,500 to 3,500 pounds per square foot. So why, why a range? Well, if one is more sandy and, or it's a hard packed gravel, um, so you have to make those assumptions. And understand that, he said, because we use these numbers, that these are numbers that are acceptable, meaning that the real number is significantly higher than these. So there's basically a, a safety factor built into this, but you'll understand in a second that these are two feet wide. So for every foot, it's carrying, let's say, 3,000 pounds or three kips. If you want to learn a new word, structural engineers measure loads in kips, and kips is basically 1,000 pounds. So one ton is two kips. 3,000 pounds is three kips. We have basically a one kip load coming down. But understand, this is 3,000 pounds per square foot. So that means the reaction of our footing is roughly six kips. So understand that our 930 pounds, the reaction here is roughly six X. So we could load this with six floors and walls and still be within the number of strength that our reaction is happening at that footing. And like I said, this one here is split. So the beams are taking some of that load and then they're taking it back um, to a footing. I don't know exactly where they are, but remember we had these footings out here that were three foot square. So remember if we take that footing at three foot square, that's actually nine square feet. So at 3,000 pounds, those are good for 27 kips, each one of those footings. So, and again, you know, you should get all of your stuff reviewed by a structural engineer. These are just some basic math to run through to just give you the understanding that we're not skimping on this footing, it's actually six times the load here. And these footings here, yes, they're bringing in 27,000 pounds, which every 10 feet, at nine feet, you can suggest that every 10 feet of that is maybe a thousand pounds. So each of these footings is seeing maybe 10,000 pounds, and you can understand that, yes, that footing is two and a half times the load that's coming in on that beam. Let's jump over to here. Over here, we have no intermediate beam. So basically the wall is seeing the whole load and this is 18 feet over here. So we would split that in half and we would do the same numbers here, except that the number wouldn't be a seven, the number would be a nine. So that would be 360, 180, 360, 180, and of course, the 90. So what's that? 720, 8, 9, 1080 plus 90 is 1170. So we have a reaction at each of these footings that's 1170 pounds, a little over 1.1 kips. Remember, our footing is good for six kips. So again, we're just under, we'll call this one, just for a safety factor, we're at five times there. 
So obviously the building is built to stand up. Understand that the loads that are coming down on here are relatively low. Um, even if you inserted a second floor frame on here, that number would go up to one and a half times that number. So this number would drop down to four instead of six times. So even with a second floor, that footing is still very strong. And it's again, based on numbers that have a safety factor built in because there's no way of knowing exactly what that compressive strength is without doing some elaborate testing. So we have to make some safe assumptions and that's what we do. So anyways, there you go. That's the numbers behind concrete footing basics. All right, everybody. You can put Big Red down, give him a rest. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully we picked up on a few little tidbits of uh, just some general thoughts about how the structure actually works and why buildings stand up. Anyways, if you're looking for more, hundreds of videos on the Build Show Network. Go check them out. Um, I have a, a boatload there. Watch them seven times. Get all the information you can out of there. Also have a couple Build Show Originals. We got the Hilltop Arrow Project that I did with Jake Bruton, and now we have the Build Show Build Boston. You can find those under the Originals tab on the Build Show Network website. Other than that, you can find me daily on Instagram. I'm there posting, putting up stuff, chatting about it, answering questions, making discussions, so check that out. And then lastly, you can find me on the Unbuild It podcast, where I team up with good friends Peter Yost and Jake Bruton. Talk about everything building. So anyways, Unbuilded Podcast. Go check it out. It's on all the audio channels and we record. And so you can watch the behind the scenes antics on YouTube. So anyways, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, long live our buildings.